Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS STTM programming. In this video, we will see how to easily remember the three general observation classes and some examples under each of those classes. So in clinical trials, we collect a lot of amount of data and STTM classifies it into three classes. So you can easily remember the three classes if you try to remember these three phrases. So what are the treatments taken and what happened to the subject? and what are the examinations performed on the subject. So SDTM broadly uh, classifies this treatments taken with the name of interventions. So which means what is being given to the subjects. So though I have used the word treatments here, so this broadly covers what is being given to the subject under interventions class. And then what happened to the subject. So SDTM calls this as events and then the examinations performed on the subject sdtm calls this set of examinations with the name of findings so the three general observation classes are interventions events and findings so interventions you can easily remember with the phrase treatments taken and for events so you can remember it as what happened to the subject and for findings you can remember as the examinations performed on the subject so now let's come to the interventions class and see how you can remember some examples under that class so in every clinical trial what we do is we compare our investigational product which means with the drug which we want to test with some placebo or any existing medical product so your investigational medical product along with placebo or the already existing marketed product. So we call those as study medications. So we administer study medications of that treatment to the subject and we use two domains called EC and EX to capture the information related to study treatments. So two examples under interventions which are related to study medication are EC and EX. And then we have other medications. So, for example, the subject participating in a clinical trial may get fever or some body pains and they may take some medications uh, for those conditions. So, they are not technically study medications, they are other medications which are not study medications. So, we capture such kind of treatments taken under a domain called CM, which stands for concomitant medications. And then, as I mentioned, so the we uh, we can easily remember the interventions class as treatments taken, but the broad term is intervention, what is being done to the patient. So surgeries and procedures is also con collected under interventions domain. Any surgeries, prior surgeries or on-study surgeries or procedures like CT scan that are being performed on the subject are falls under interventions class. So we have a domain called PR, which stands for procedures to capture the surgeries or any other medical procedures conducted. So there will be some studies in which the type of the meal and the amount of meal consumed uh, by the patients also needs to be tracked. So we have a data set called meals, so which is used to store the information related to meals. The abbreviation for meals data set is ML. So along with these study medications, other medication procedures and meals, sometimes what happens is the amount of tobacco consumed or caffeine taken by the subject or the alcohol or the, if the subject is taking any other drugs. So those will have an impact on how the body behaves uh, with the, our study medication. So we also collect whether the subject has the habit of any, taking any of these things on uh, in, and as such they are considered as an intervention, something which is administered to the patient. So we use a domain called SU to store that information. So SU is for substances. So EC and EX for study medication. Any other medication goes into concomitant medications. If it is not a medication but a procedure or surgery, so and then we store it in procedures. And for meal related information, we store it in ML data set. And then next comes our what happened to the subject. So as discussed, so we SDTM calls it as events. So the events is any occurrence that happened to the subject. So it can be prior to the start of the study or on during the study. So there can be some medical conditions experienced by the subjects 
even before they enter into the study but we may be interested in collecting that information because some of those medical conditions may have an impact uh, on our on how the subject behaves uh, to the our study medication so we collect that information so where do we store this information we store the medical history information in a data set called mh and then the study medication may cause some side effects uh, while the patient is on study so it need, need not be the side effects or any occurrence medical occurrences while the subject uh, uh, is facing on the study will be captured in a data set called ae so these uh, medical occurrences or side effects need not be related to your study medication it can be any uh, medical conditions occurring on study would be reported in a data set called adverse events and then we have seen in one of the previous videos that we keep track of what is happening to the study say for example the date when the subject signed the informed consent and the date the subject uh, date when the subject was randomized and whether the subject chose to continue in the treatment or discontinue the treatment and similarly whether the subject chose to complete or discontinue the study overall so all those statuses would be captured in a domain called ds so in a domain called ds so what happened to the study uh, subject over uh, different periods so that information goes into ds and then so we have seen that uh, some medical occurrences can happen and those medical occurrences will be reported in ae but out of all the medical occurrences some medical occurrences could be of interest for us say for example if we are conducting any study on seizures the occurrence of seizures would be of interest for us so in that case so we call this occurrence of seizure as an event of interest in that study so we store that kind of information in a domain called clinical events so medical occurrences are the events or what happened to the subject but if that occurrence is of interest to the uh, in in terms of that study then we store that information in a domain called ce so and again so some of the medical conditions may lead to hospitalization of the subject so we store the hospitalization related information in a data set called ho so we have MH for prior medical conditions, AE for on study medical conditions, and DS for storing the status of uh, subject over different study uh, over different phases of the study, and then events of interest under CE and HO for hospitalization. So and then comes our examinations performed as discussed earlier. So SDTM calls it as findings domain. So some of the findings that we can easily remember is say for example while the subject is on study so he or she may come to the clinical site uh, to the investigator so the investigator would physically examine the subject so if the say, uh, the simplest case could be if there are any rashes on the skin or if there is any abnormality uh, in the way the eyes are appearing so such kind of physical examination would be performed so such information would be stored in a data set called PE meant for physical examination so again at the time of the entry into the study we examine or we try to find whether the subject is meeting all the inclusion criteria specified or whether the subject is meeting any exclusion criteria specified in the protocol so we store that findings related to inclusion and exclusion criteria in a domain called IE and then in order to assess the safety or uh, efficacy of the drug so we do take some labs uh, blood samples or urine samples and analyze them in the laboratory so that information uh, for all the tests that are being performed on the subjects blood sample and urine sample would be stored in a data set called lb which stands for laboratory analysis results so laboratory test results so we use lb to store that results and we may also need to perform ECG which is electrocardiogram to assess if there are any abnormalities seen in the cardiovascular system or to, which are related to heart. So we store that findings from ECG in a data set called EG which stands for electrocardiogram test results. And then we also collect information uh, related to systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure and how the pulse is varying 
over different uh, time points when the subject is on the study. So those findings which are related to vital signs of the subject would be stored in a data set called VES. And then there can be some questionnaires like what is the pain severity that the subject is experiencing in some of the studies. So we have explicit questionnaires. So in that cases that questionnaire is considered as a finding and the information would be stored in a data set called QS. And then whenever we are administering study medication, we may be interested in understanding how much drug is actually reaching the blood and your, it is up available in the blood. And then we may also be interested in seeing how that is varying over time. So the drug concentration related information, we have two data sets. One is PC, which is called pharmacokinetic concentration. So this data set contains only the information related to the how much drug is present uh, in a particular blood sample taken at a time point. So, but we use that concentrations obtained over different time points and derive some parameters. So, like how much drug is present in the body till that point in time. So, we call something called as AUC. And there are some other parameters like Cmax, Tmax, etc., which are derived from the concentration data collected here. So that finding related to pharmacokinetic concentration goes into a data set called PC and the derived parameters coming out of PC would be stored in a data set called PP. And then similarly, we may also track or find the total number of tablets dispensed to the subject at each visit and the how many number of tablets that the subject is returning at the follow up uh, subsequent visit to see how complained the subject is. So we are finding about the number of tablets dispensed and uh, written in terms so that we can identify the compliance with the treatment. So we have a data set called DA which is which stands for drug accountability to store such information. So these are some of the examples which can be easily be remembered if we try to visualize it this way for under the three general observation classes. The three general observation classes are interventions events and findings so interventions you can easily remember if it if you can try to recollect the phrase treatments taken or procedures or any other substances used by the subject and then for uh, events so you can try to remember what happened to the subject uh, then under which we have prior medical conditions side effects or medical conditions experienced while on study and status over study and then events of interest and then hospitalization and then for examination so physical examination inclusion or exclusion criteria met or not at study entry and then we have laboratory examinations ecg examinations vital science examinations and uh, find the concentration in uh, drug that is reaching the body over different time points and use that information to derive some uh, pharmacokinetic parameters like Cmax, Tmax, AUC and then uh, you can also uh, find the compliance of the drug that total amount of drug that the subject is receiving by collecting information related to the dispensed amount versus returned amount. So that information you store it in DA domain. So this is how you can remember the three general observation cl classes and some examples under each of those three classes. So apart from these three general observation classes, we have something called as uh, special purpose domains. So the data that is not falling under these three domains, we call it as special purpose domains. So the data sets that are considered as special purpose are your demographic data set, subject visit data set, subject element data set, and your comment data set. So these are the four commonly seen special purpose domains. I think there are some new, uh, newly added special purpose domains in some of the newest IGs, but you can try to remember these four demographics, subject visits, subject elements, and comments data set. So we have seen how to easily remember the three general observation classes and how to easily recollect a few examples under each of those three classes. Thank you for watching and keep learning.